Hi guys, Paul here from Behavior News. Gonna do a little revisit here. Everyone's doing all these, especially Brother Craig, is doing all these beautiful Weinheim Stefana Bias, Augustina Braus, Angers, the whole deal. Peter's doing it too. And I picked up a beer to do as well a couple days ago. And this is the, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what happened there. This is the Weinheim Stefanus Vitus. This is a Weizenbach from Fleissing, Germany, from the Stadtsbrau. Weinheim Stefana. Stadtsbrauerie. Weinheim Stefana. And this is coming in at 7.7 .7 alcohol by volume, of course, brewed by the Reinheitsgebot of 1516, the German Purity Law. Uh, German Purity Law. My face is doing weird things. So let us get into this. And again, this is a revisit. It's on the channel already, I think. Pretty sure. And we'll see if this bottle holds up to the bottle that I had before. $3.39 I paid for this one. We'll crack it open. Crack it open. And we're just going to... And proper hashtag proper glassware. Hashtag it's filling up like a motherfucker. That's crazy. That was less than expected. That's really crazy of that head. I don't remember the head being so cray cray. The cray cray head. I have a bottle. Oh, you have a bottle. That's good. This head. I don't remember the head being this cray cray. This went full full cray cray. Look at that. I mean, it's just streaming away. Gray, gray. Smells absolutely fantastic. And proper glassware. Here's the funny thing is, because I don't know if I really want to wait for this. And I want to do a secondary test. Hold on for a second. Be right back. Excuse me. Pardon me. Sorry about that. Nope. Wrong one. This one. Right here. What's better than having two Vine uh, one Vine Hein Chef on a glass? Having two. Let's see if this thing blows up again. I'm curious. Oh look at that. I'm just gonna leave the sedimentation of beautiful yeast cake in the bottom of the bottle. Uh, usually I stir that up, but look at that. That's that is actually not normal. The uh, east, the uh, the heads of doom, from what I remember, is not a normal thing. But at the same time, that doesn't mean the beer is bad. I'm just let I'm just letting you know. And uh, again, this is on my channel already, so I'll have to look back and see if this thing just filled up this stuff with head like that. But I really doubt it did. I really doubt it did. I don't remember that at all. So. And I wanted to do it like a, maybe just like the first pitch of it was a little crazy. So I wanted to do a secondary, and the secondary did blow up as well. So now I got two fists full of head. Look at that. But it is clearing out. It is. There's the more sedimentation, and here's the more cristal, clear. So I'll just drink both, and... It'll be a good. Uh, it'll be a good way to to say, okay, this is what it's like. Clear. This is the way that with a little bit more sedimentation. So you know, you got to take the good with the bad, and that's what I'm going to do now because I have a feeling it's pretty good. It's going to be a pretty good beer anyway, even with the crazy head generation of doom. It's like a rocky top mocha shake, and dip your French fries in that. It's just looks like it's vanilla ice cream, vanilla milkshake on the top of this thing. Crazy cray cray, but it is it is actually calming down and returning back to the beautiful beautiful thing that which is beer. So that's good. That's definitely good. So let's get a Roman again. Wow, it's like banana, clove, caramel, pepperiness. Earthiness. 
even like a hint of coriander, coriander, clove, that wheat tonality is definitely coming through there as well. Lots of caramel. Yeah, clove, kind of smoky note, caramel. Even a little bit of earthiness, almost like an autumnal leaf kind of earthiness. Definitely have that banana breadiness. Mm. They just smell so good. They really do. They do. They, they smell like basically like a banana, almost what is it? It goes banana bread, kind of banana nut breads and stuff like that with a little bit of a walnut husk. Walnut in there with the banana bread straight out of the oven. It's pretty goddamn good. So let's get into it. Cheers. Okay. It's a little bit on the thin side. Kind of goes into that high side of a medium mouthfeel, tapered down at the end. Overall, starts off in the medium, the low side of the medium, kind of finishes on that high side of the low. A little bit mineralistic in the back end. Has a little bit of a mineralistic tone in the back end. But that first initial hit is nothing but clove and banana, that wheat tonality, pepperiness, hint of a almost a coriander kind of vibe. Ooh. Just very enjoyable. Easy drinking, enjoyable. 7.7, .7, no hint of ABV as, at all. At all. Now, this is a Weizenbach. Is it my favorite Weizenbach? No. If I had to go for like a Weizenbach, I would go Aventinus. You know what I mean? That kind of just because I'm pretty sure that's a Weizenbach as well. Yeah, definitely go Aventinus on that one. But this is pretty good too. Hmm. Goes down like a dream. Really easy, clean. Like as clean as it can be having such vibrant characters. You still get that kind of reminiscence, cloviness, banana. Those little bready tones kind of wafting around, a little pepperiness. But overall, it's really enjoyable. It definitely just makes me want to have a good meal, you know, kind of to compare with what I'm drinking right now. Um, I remember I drank many, 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 many good beers when I was in Germany eating very, 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 very good food. And it has that kind of same hearkening kind of reminiscence to it. So it's very nice. Even though it's a bigger bottle, I know I have a little bit more right here. Uh, I'm going to try some of that with the sedimentation in it. But they don't last long. These beers just do not last long. They are just that good. Down like a treat. On to the next one. It's it's one of those kind of things. There's this one's been brewing. Van and Stefan, I'm pretty sure, has been brewing since 1040. They know what they're doing and they do it very well. And I'm very happy when I get a hand, uh, get, I can actually get a hold of some of those Van Hein Stefan beers. Unfortunately, I'm out of the Corbinians, the aged ones, the aged Corbinians that I did have. So I'm going to have to see about getting uh, uh, my stock resupplied of that. I do have probably uh, at least a half a case of Axman Kavara's uh, Rauk uh, Yerbach now in the in the old dungeon at the parents' house. So it's really nice to know that I have a supply of that just kind of hanging around for when I want one. But I think Corbinian's my favorite double bock um, overall. I think I, I was going to say, like, I have, like, the Iyengar Celebrator in here and stuff like that. And it's a really fine beer, too. But I, I think... Excuse me. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pop a celebrator, salvator, and then the Corbett. I'm sorry. I'm trying to talk and I'm burping. Excuse me. I'm. I think I'm gonna have to grab the. Oh, by the way, Kent says so. I keep forgetting to touch it. 
I'm going to have to grab the Celebrator, the Salvator from Polymer, and then, of course, the Corbidium from Vinehunter. Chef on it. Put them all in a row and just do another head-to-head -head, uh, double box showdown because those are like, as far as I'm concerned, now I haven't had a Celebrator from, I think it was it Maximus? What is that one? Um, from Augustina. I, I don't know what the Augustina brow is, uh, their double box is. I've never seen it. I think it was like Maxima Tour or something like that. But I've never actually had it. I've never seen it. But out of the three that I would say are heavy hitting double box goodness, from Germany, by the way, are those three. So I think I'm, I really am going to have to sit down maybe with somebody else and do kind of like a blind boodily boodily boo and figure out what we're dealing with with double box. But Weizenbach. I think I have to go with Aventinus for the for the Bison box because this is pretty good though. Hmm. Brightness has kicked up a little bit, kind of almost boring, just the subtle nuance of a, like a floral hay straw kind of character, but very, 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 very super subtle. It kind of tends to lean a little bit to the softest backwash like at the end of even a little bit mixing with that banana mixing with that hay mixing with the brain is pretty good like a little bit of a lemon very soft very soft very subtle very faint but very nice i still prefer if i had to choose i still prefer this without the sedimentation even though obviously you know you had to do. I had to do this once or twice, so it's gonna mix it up. But normally, I think I would just pour it in, call it a day, and enjoy it. I'm listening to the Martin soundtrack from George A. Romero, that was made in Pittsburgh. I always liked this uh, music. It's like a little jazzy stuff, but it always reminded me of uh, Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. I like that too. When he when they when they're going through the when Snoopy's going through the countryside pretending to be in the French area. So, I always like that. Hmm. Yeah, it is a good beer. A lot of people say the Vitus is like a high, high-ranking beer for them. And I, I, I can understand that. But, for me, personally, I got a little bit more in this glass. So I'll just chuck that in there. Double vine high Stefano glasses. That's just more shit I have to clean now. Perfect. But hmm. a little water in the back end, a little bit more mineralistic than I'd like. I've had this two or three times now, at least. Just trying to think. I think this actually might be a little bit lower than when I had it last time. But this bottle, this time, this taste. I think I'm going to throw this one in the 8 category. I'm going to throw it in the 8 out of 10. It's still very nice. It's still got the tradition. It's still got this, still got that. But now that I'm drinking the... This, this part, this one, and then kind of ranking the beer overall as a whole. And I mean, like, the yeast cake is still nice and solid down there, so it's not a full bunch of, you know, fish food or crap like that. But I think for what it is, I have no problem, like, giving this beer an 8 out of 10. I was going to go 8.5, but I think this beer, this time, this now, like, you know, this one, this, this, this review... This time, this beer, this bottle, this right now, I think is going to get made. Now, your bottle might be different. I, I look forward to uh, Craig. I look forward to your review and see what you think about this. But um, I'm pretty sure Aventinus from Schneider Weisse is um, is also a Eisenbach or a, not Eisenbach, a Weisenbach. You put these head to head, Aventinus is going to blow their doors off. Uh, this might be a Weizenbach. Aventinus might be a Weizen Doublebach. 
Um, I'm not really sure about the terminology right here, right now, right off my head. But this is a very good beer. And I'm going to throw this one in the 8, eight out of 10 region for right now. I think I gave it higher last time. This is a revisit, by the way. But, yeah, I'm feeling 8 out of 10 right now. But uh, it's pretty interesting. I have, I have a beer that might be horrible. I'll show you. I want to review. I'm not going to review it now. I'm going to review it tomorrow. Tomorrow live. I'm going to do a live review of this tomorrow. I've really, I've always seen it, and I've never had a chance to pick it up because it's always been in case form. I've never actually had a single bottle I could ever buy. But it's the McEwen's Scotch Ale. And I don't know how old this bottle is, but I found it. And it is 8% alcohol by volume. And I've never had it. And I don't even know where it's from. I have no idea. Apparently, it's the product of the United Kingdom. That's where you're from, Craig. And brewed and bottled by Marston. So this is a Marston's product. And it is best before. Well, it's, it's, it's past its best before date. So that's good at least. So I'm going to do this one tomorrow. The McEwen's Scotch Ale, which I've just, I'm, looked, I'm looking forward to trying it. I, I don't know if it'll be good or not, but fuck it. Let's get, let's do it. But as far as the Weinheim Stefana goes, I'm going to throw this into the A category. And this has been Paul from Bay Brunish. And thank you, Brother Cray, for, for tuning in and commenting. This has been Paul from Bay Brunish. Bye-bye. Look out. Watch out. Watch that finger. Cheers.